Hey, it's Steve Kinney here. In this video, I'm sharing some quick tips and tricks to supercharge your workflow with Luna and Apollo. These are practical workflow tips and everyday hacks that I personally rely on, but they might fly under the radar because they don't really need a full-blown tutorial, but they're still really worth sharing and talking about. So remember to like and subscribe for all things UA. Let's get started. All right, first up on my list is a quick way to bypass your plugins in and out. This is obviously really useful for when you're mixing and you wanna see if your source is getting better or worse. And it's incredibly easy. All you have to do is hold Command and click on the plugin slot. Now this is really useful because for most UAD2 plugins, powering off the plugin is different than bypassing the plugin. And whenever you power off the plugin, you usually get a little bit of a delay, maybe a pop, which is the signal being processed in and out by the Apollo and the DSP powering on and off. Using this shortcut avoids that and it's instantaneous for a being really helpful. The next tip is hiding your plugin windows rather than closing them. To hide your plugin window, use the shortcut Shift plus W and to bring it back, use Shift plus W again. This is great because it can hide all of your open plugin windows at once. So you don't have to keep closing and clicking on plugins individually in the mixer to bring up the whole signal chain. Now this next tip I use constantly on a day-to-day -day basis. If you ever have a situation where you wanna copy a plugin with the same settings over to another track, you could certainly go the long way around and click on an insert slot, find the plugin in the browser, add it, copy the settings, etc. What I like to do instead is simply option click and drag. Even if you wanna have different settings, but just have the same plugin, from a workflow and speed perspective, sometimes it's just faster to click and drag to the target track than manually go and add the plugin. Another great plugin management tip when you want to remove a plugin from the chain, simply click and drag a plugin to anywhere outside of the insert slots. This will save you more time than you realize as you move forward in your session, and it's so simple, very easy to overlook. All right, next up, let's talk about a handy DSP saving feature. Built in under the hood of Luna is the Intelligent Resource Management System, where when you have a UAD2 DSP accelerated plugin, you can quickly and automatically go back and forth when you arm a track from UADX to UAD2. This is nice on its own, but say you're far into a session and you have loads of DSP plugins and you gotta go back and track a vocal or do an overdub somewhere and you need to free up DSP resources. You can actually do this process across your whole session very quickly. All you have to do is go up to mixing and click on convert UAD2 plugins to UADX. And you can also go the other way, making everything accelerated too. Now, obviously it's handy to free up DSP for tracking in real time, but sometimes it's handy to go the other way and free up CPU resources as well. Simple, but powerful, love it, moving on. This next tip is more of a recording workflow tip than a plugin workflow related tip, but still it's a great tip. So say you have an awesome electric guitar tone and you wanna double it, and rather than creating a new track and loading plugins, creating the chain all over again, what you're looking to do is a process called duplicate without content. It's easy to do. All you have to do is right click on the track header and choose duplicate without content or use the shortcut shift option D. This comes in really handy when you're stacking tracks or if you wanna take a signal and process a section of that signal slightly differently with additional processors, etc. Say for example, like a guitar solo, you wanna keep the underlying tone to start out with, but maybe add like a extra pedal or add a little bit more distortion, duplicate the original track and then add your processor. Moving on into editing workflow related tips, something that just feels really nice to me comparatively to other DAWs in my opinion is the responsiveness of snap editing in Luna. It's great but when I'm editing a vocal or really any signal and I wanna clean up my audio, remove silent sections, sometimes those edits fall just outside of a snap region. So what I like to do is toggle off snap during portions of editing. You can disable snap really quickly by clicking up in the top left portion of the timeline or with the shortcut shift backslash. Now, another reason I mention this is because of how easy it makes the next part of our edit job and our next quick tip fast clip fades. Now that snap is disabled, you can click right up to the start of your signal, which is likely just outside of that bar or snap point, and precisely add a clip fade. You can add a clip fade at the front with the letter D on your keyboard and add a fade out with the letter G. Now let's talk about the tracks ruler. 
You may or may not have noticed, but this tracks lane at the top is actually an intentionally designed selectable area. You can use it to click and drag to select all clips within the timeline. This is useful for quickly rearranging entire sections of the song, which brings us to the next tip, shift editing. Now, just like ripple deleting or insert editing in video editing, you can do this same sort of workflow in Luna for audio editing. So say you wanna copy a section of your track and paste it between another and move everything down the timeline, you can do that very easily. First, use the tracks lane we just mentioned to select the portion of your project you want to copy or work with. Next, we have some options. Use the shortcut Shift plus D to paste that selected section immediately to the right of the playhead and move everything else back in the timeline. Use Shift plus X to delete the selection and move everything backwards, again, like a ripple delete in video editing. Use C to copy and use Shift plus V to paste the selection at your selected spot in the track and shift the rest of the timeline over. And if you just want to insert some empty bars, click where you want to break the audio in the tracks lane and press Command plus E to separate the tracks globally across the whole project. Then select how much time you want to insert and use the shortcut Shift plus I. If you commit these shortcuts to memory, you'll make your tracking session feel so creative being able to manage the arrangement on the fly quickly very, very useful for that sort of thing. Next tip, did you know you have a very natural sounding de built right into Luna that's ultra precise, so let's check it out. I love a great de -esser. The Oxford de is one of my favorites, but de are typically meant to target a problematic sounding frequency in the recording. So if you happen to like the brightness of your S's but they're just too loud, try this. Find the spot in the timeline where your sibilant part is located, highlight the region and separate it with the shortcut Command E. Then clip gain the S down and add some crossfades. Now while this might sound like a bit of a tedious process, tonally you're gonna get a very natural sounding attenuation. Keep in mind that this process is all pre-processing too, so your compressor is gonna be exaggerating the S's and you might find yourself pulling these clips down by quite a lot that's totally okay, use your ears. For our next tip, who says quantization has to be exclusively a MIDI tool? I don't, so let's use it for our audio editing too. Now obviously, this would be very useful for tightening up drum sequences, and it's easy. Just find the clip that you wanna correct and click on the little Q icon next to the clip gain. This opens up the quantization menu. Audition your snap settings and be sure to verify your grouping priority if you're working with multiple wave files at the same time, and then just click quantize. A little bit of an extra tip for you here, not only do I love this because you can quantize small sections at a time, but you can also go back into the warps view for your track after you've quantized and manually correct anything that the algorithm might have gotten wrong. So it's not like this process is destructive, it simply speeds everything up. And while we're on the topic of session views, another one that I use all the time is the shortcut to resize your entire session view. With larger sessions, it's easy to get lost in a sea of track zoom ins and zoom outs. And what I like to do is use this shortcut to get a quick overview of your entire session and reset your view. Use the shortcut Control Option Command down. This fits the entire project into the frame and it's a great way to just take a step back and see everything at once. Next, let's chat about some mixing tips. All right, first up on my list is simply put, use a bus for your spatial effects like reverbs and delays, etc. Simply add a bus, put your reverb on that bus and route a send from the source track to the bus and then use the bus fader to blend the amount of the effect in. Now, one of the reasons I bring this up is because if you have a mono track and you put a stereo effect on it, now that stereo effect's gonna be collapsed down to mono which obviously isn't the intent if you're using this big lush reverb. So bust your fix. Now, what would a good audio video be without completely contradicting yourself at least once? This next tip involves putting an effect on your track, but with a twist. Rather than putting the effect on the track directly, we're simply gonna duplicate the track with the content and then apply the effect on top of that. This effectively works like a bus, except you don't really have send level, so you're always working at 100% unity gain. You kind of skip the step of adding a send and setting up send level. And then of course, you can bounce the track down really quickly, which brings me to the next tip, reversing audio. 
So of course you can reverse anything you want, but typically for a really cool effect, you can take a printed reverb sound like the one we just bounced down and very simply reverse it for this very ethereal kind of swelling sound. Simply choose your clip and use the shortcut shift control R. The reason that both of these tips work hand in hand is that when you go to set up this traditional way of using a bus, you'd have to automate what parts of the track that you want to trigger the reverb and then bounce down from there. Whereas if you duplicate the track, you can simply delete out the parts of the track really quickly and then you have a small segment to bounce down and reverse. It's just a tiny bit more efficient for this specific task. Say you're mixing drums or working with a group of tracks and you wanna add or tweak one track specifically out of the group, you can toggle your groups on and off very quickly using the shortcut Shift Command G. Now usually I find myself having groups turned on during the main parts of editing, but I don't always work so linearly. Sometimes I mix while I edit, sometimes I edit while I mix. So keeping this shortcut handy makes balancing the two different workflows that much faster. Alternatively, if it's something simple where you're working really quickly, say for example, just changing a pan, in that case, it might be faster to just override the group for that specific moment and move. And this time we can simply hold the control key down while interacting with the parameter. Now the group stays intact and we can keep working with all the other groups without having to toggle anything back on. This next tip is a feature about Luna that I really like. It's called bus spill. Basically, it's a way of digesting your entire mix down to just a couple of tracks. Of course, you have to be using buses and setting up your session to use buses in the first place, but nonetheless, to spill a bus, go to the mixer and find the bus you want to spill down, click on spill or select the bus and use the shortcut shift R. Now, if you've set up your mix efficiently, you could spill your main bus to collapse your entire mix down to just a handful of tracks, making balancing your overall mix much easier to digest if you have a large session. The Apollo is at the very heart of Luna, so we couldn't do this video and not mention a couple of tips on the Duo. A really handy feature for a variety of reasons is the copy mix function. Say you have a bunch of tracks and you wanna take that entire mix of tracks and send it someplace else, like say a headphone mix or a new bus, simply right click on the fader and choose copy mix to send or cue. So the next time that you have to create an individual headphone mix and you're using a bunch of tracks, give this one a try. Jumping off the last headphone mix idea, here's an even faster way to build separate headphone mixes. Pull up your cue sends and send the main fader to the cue mix. This includes all signals in playback with the exception of the live signals themselves. Once you have the ideal amount of the main master fader and playback audio, go to your live input sources and bring them up in the mix. This is great because it's not only a fast way to build a more me style headphone mix, you can also bring up individual parts of the mix quickly if the performer asks for it. Just go to that specific track in question and slowly add more of it into the cue mix. Now, sometimes it might feel like you're stabbing in the dark to understand what your performer is actually hearing in that headphone mix, but there's already a solution for this. You can actually listen into the headphone cue very easily so you hear what your performer hears. Click on show control room and underneath source, choose your cue, and now you're stealing a feed off of that cue straight to your monitors. Now you don't have to guess what your artist is hearing. One of the best things about the Apollo is how flexible the internal routing is. Since it's almost like a digital patch bay in a way, we can access those feeds in Luna as inputs for tracks. This means we can record our aux channels in console while we record our live inputs. To print your effects on your aux channel, add a new stereo track and identify the input to either be auxiliary one or auxiliary two, wherever your effects are. Arm it and mute it so you don't hear it twice. This is a very handy way of committing reverbs or delays without actually fully committing to them while you record. When you're in the studio, sometimes you want to feel your preamps interacting with your source. And with the Apollo, you can do that. Simply load a Unison plugin, and by default, the preamp knob works as expected, but if you long press and hold, you can cycle through the other gain stages by quick pressing again on the knob. So now you can get the tactile feel not only for the preamp, but also for the output sections. Now, we've covered a bunch of really great tips in this video. However, there are some honorable mentions that I really didn't want to leave off of this video.
First up is auto gain. If you have large track counts and you need to gain stage quickly, use auto gain. Arm your tracks and click on auto gain. Set your target levels and let the Apollo handle the rest. Now this is a really great useful tool if you're tracking yourself and you don't have anyone running the session, I myself welcome this feature with open arms. Next, if you're using console, it's super easy to commit plugins, just hit the rec button in console. But if you're new to Luna and you didn't notice, you can easily commit your UAD2 plugins to WAVE if you've loaded them in the insert slots, simply drag the plugin up to the record effect slot. Now this works the other way too, if you've loaded a plugin in the record slot, but you didn't want to commit, just drag the plugin down to an insert slot and you're good to go. If you have an Apollo Twin all the way up through X16, then you have a built-in talkback mic, and this mic can be used as an actual mic, and the signal can be captured in Luna, which could be really fun for nasty gritty lo-fi sounds. To do this, create a new stereo track and select the input source as talkback. Arm the track, and here's the key. Turn the talkback mic on via your Apollo, or you can do it in the software as well. Now you can get that artfully crushed room mic sound very easily thanks to the Apollo. All right, so give these tips a go on your next project and let me know what you think in the comments below. Or if you have some tips of your own, share them with the rest of the Universal Audio community down below. Be sure to give this video a like and stay subscribed for all things UA. And lastly, some great news, you're making a big difference with your feedback in Luna, so keep it going. If you have ideas on what should be next for Luna, leave them in the feedback menu. That's all I've got for you today. See you in the next video. Cheers.